Hey guys, Chaps here, and welcome back to part 3 of this mini-series. So far, I've covered the good and the bad. And well, today's a continuation of the bad. I previously focused on more of the in-lobby aspects, so today we'll be focused more on the mode mechanics and how the game actually plays out. Let's begin with one of the most daunting changes on later waves, and that's the lack of ammo. Ammo is super scarce in Gears 5 Horde, which causes many people to fight over the ammo boxes. One alternative is to utilize the weapon lockers, but even those are super slow unless you have that overclock card on, or whatever it's called now. Adding to this ammo scarcity debacle is the strength of weapons. Perhaps the amount of ammo we have is just fine, but when you mix this with the strength of most weapons, it becomes very apparent that the standard weapons just don't cut it. This has led to the current meta of basically using nothing but heavy weapons, or more specifically, the tri shot. I mean, Good god the tri shot's powerful. I don't blame people for wanting to use it. On higher waves in particular, it's absolutely amazing how effective it is compared to the other weapons. And speaking of the power of other weapons, let's talk about the power of classes, or I guess heroes as we're calling them now. And yeah, yeah, the class locked character video, still coming later this week. Most people have found the meta to become kinda stale. You have JD, Kate, Dell, and Jack, and then maybe Cog Gear or something as your fifth? With TC going all in on this hero shooter type thing, they sure launched with a lackluster roster. This has led to the meta getting stale pretty quickly. Not only that, but certain characters have very clearly been pushed aside by fans due to their ineffectiveness on higher levels. Sure, Foz is getting an upgrade, and maybe Marcus will, but honestly, it's sorta of surprising that the game launched with them being this weak in the first place. Sort of a side note about classes is that I don't really like how some of the cards are basically required. If Dell doesn't have a repair boost and weapon locker optimization on, you're instantly at a disadvantage. It was the same way in Gears 4, where each class had a pretty clear best loadout with maybe a few small variations. I would have liked to see them force a few more trade-offs. Like, don't make any card choice an obvious choice. Oh, and on a similar note, it would have been nice to see the classes themselves have a more significant trade-off. Right now, each class excels in a certain area, but besides the engineer, they don't really sacrifice anything. I would have liked the heavy class to have more health, but be slower, or something like that. If we're gonna make a hero shooter, let's fully embrace it. But again, check back later this week for more details on my class lock discussion stuff. Let's move off of characters and talk about fortifications. To start with, the slow carry speed is a killer. I'm all for the engineer having faster speed, but my god, everyone else is close to useless. When you consider that TC wants you to move your base to the opposite side of maps due to power taps, this becomes even more annoying. Why make everyone so slow? It deters people from doing what TC wants them to do, which is move to the power tap. Also on fortifications, we have the fact that only engineers can upgrade fortifications. This basically makes an engineer into a required class. I'm already not a fan of certain classes only being able to build certain fortifications, but I guess I can get over that one. If the system stays like that, people should at least be able to upgrade fortifications that they're able to build. Oh, and a side note, why were the turrets removed? Yeah, I get that they dominated the meta and made things stale, but was it really necessary to remove them? Why not modify them into something different, or rebalance them? Personally, I would have loved to see a Gauss Cannon version that was slow and powerful, or even a Railgun variant that rewarded precision shots. But anyways, let's move on from fortifications, uh, sorta, of, and talk about the way energy or power is spent. Giving equal power to everyone is a great idea. Unfortunately, it can also lead to selfishness, which I'll hit on when we discuss perks. From what I understand, the main reason for splitting power was so that the game evolved away from this system of siphon power to the fabricator and then have the engineer build. Well, guess what? That's still exactly how people are playing. I'd argue that it's partially out of habit, but it's largely due to the fact that it's simply the most effective way to play. I'm personally not really against that system, I kinda like the idea of having people bring power to the engineer, and then giving the engineer that responsibility of building the base, and for that reason I feel that the system actually works pretty well. The only reason I'm even bringing up the power flow in these videos is one, it leads to selfish teammates through perks, and two, it sorta seems to be failing TC's intention of not having them siphon it through the fabricator all the time. Oh, and three, it's kind of unfortunate that the power is still the key to success. And that? Well, that leads us to Jack. Yesterday I discussed how awesome he was, but not everything's sunshine and rainbows. Jack is super fun, 
but he's basically become mandatory, along with the forge. Not only can this make Jack slightly less fun to play as, but it also sets a standard for everything else. If the game was balanced around the assumption that people would be using Jack as an energy making machine, then basically any other strategy is inferior. I love the idea of Jack, and I find him enjoyable to play as. I just wish that he was a bit more balanced and not a cornerstone of the run. Next up was going to be three fairly large topics, but instead I'm going to hold off on those for a video tomorrow. These topics are power taps, challenges, and perks. All three of these, while they have some good aspects, I feel that they could definitely be improved upon, so be on the lookout for that tomorrow. The last topic for this video is on enemy variety. No, not just the types of enemies, but also their weapons. Honestly, I hadn't really considered the weapon issue until someone brought it up on Reddit. The enemies carry a very limited range of weapons, and most don't even align with the weapons that you spawn with. This leads you to needing to use enemy weapons or rely on the locker. With things like the claw, this really isn't that bad of an option. JD's Lancer GL? Yeah, you're kinda SOL on that one. As a sniper, I imagine it would be quite difficult. You need to hope for a DB wave with M bars. you have no shot at a long shot, and I guess you can get marks from the hunters? But in general, the low weapon variety? It doesn't make for a great experience. Beyond the enemy weapon variation, we get into the actual enemy variation. It certainly has improved since Gears 4, and I do appreciate the stylized waves of Swarm or DBs and so on, but I think most people are disappointed that we haven't seen the Locust return. It would be a ton of work, but having the Locust, Savage Locust, and even the Lambent return would be an incredible amount of variety. Hell, even just having a fraction of them return would be a huge plus. Some of the Locusts have a different style of AI, but hey, if it gets some more variety, I'd even be fine with them taking a shortcut and having the Locust share AI with the Swarm. Gears 4 and 5 certainly introduced some memorable enemies, but Gears 3 is still the golden age of enemy variety, and everything since then has really felt like a downgrade on this front. Serapedes, Reavers, Beast Riders, Shriekers, Tickers, Cantus, I mean, come on, the list goes on and on. Each of these is a unique enemy type that strays from the standard humanoid bullet sponge with a gun. And that doesn't even begin to hit on the variety of the Lambent. So yeah, I'd say Horde certainly has some room for improvement. Is it good? Yeah, probably. I enjoyed it for a bit. I probably wore myself out on Gears 4 Horde, so Gears 5 just isn't really doing it for me right now. So even with the changes I've proposed, I'm not sure how much I could really get back into it. That said, this entire week of videos is based on the feedback that I've collected on Reddit and Twitter. So while these really just reflect my personal opinions, it's clear that I'm not alone on most of it. Be sure to check back tomorrow as we discuss perks, bonus objectives, and power taps. And then, as you probably guessed, I'll be hitting on the ever-popular class-locked characters topic on Friday. Go ahead and drop this a like if you think we earned it, and hit that subscribe button. I can still see that 80% of you haven't subbed yet, but as always, thanks for watching.